If LinkedIn has been on your to-do list forever, then you're in luck because enrollment is currently open for October's LinkedIn content sprint. I've got 20 spots available for impactful small business owners ready to create timeless and strategic thought leadership content to attract inbound business opportunities. So if you're listening to this right now, then there is still a spot left for you. So go to lumosmarketing.co to sign up. Okay, my friend, I got to tell you, you are freaking brilliant at a lot of things. Coaching your clients towards change, providing valuable services that chip away at their biggest issues, and honestly, at our world's most pressing problems, and the list goes on. But you, as a human being, were never meant to do all of the things at once. We are terrible multitaskers. Like our brains just weren't designed to do that. And it takes different parts of our brain to do all of the different things we do all day, from sending proposals, to doing client work, to creating a piece of insightful content that will actually make shift happen, right? Doing these things with excellence. So if trying to publish your perspective on LinkedIn between Zoom calls, Slack pings, and Outlook things, if that just isn't working, if you're getting ready for a summer sabbatical or a maternity leave or a vacation that you're getting really excited about, but you still want to easily stay visible for opportunities when you return. And if you want your thought leadership content to tell a larger and more cohesive story, then batching your content for LinkedIn could definitely be for you. Like batching gives me that mental space back to be where I need to be when I need to be there or just to be away completely. So last month in February, I counted the days And I was on vacation more than I was in the office. And I highly recommend that. Like I went to go see the Sapporo Snow Festival in Hokkaido. I went to wine country. I stayed in a little cottage on a pier in San Diego. I was out. But here's the thing. When I've come back, I still had an inbox of opportunities, meaning aligned potential clients who are submitting applications, inquiries for speaking gigs, and other fun collaborations that light me up. So I want to use this podcast episode to talk about what keeps us from strategically batching our content so that we can easily and consistently stay visible and then provide some real examples of how you can overcome those barriers. And you can totally take this episode and just run with it. And if you are looking for a structured container for community support with other mission-driven business owners, if you're looking for one-on-one copy coaching and feedback from me, And this push of momentum, like a literal campfire under your booty to get going, then I'd love to invite you to join our LinkedIn content sprint next month. I will be supporting you with all the knowledge, structure, and hype woman energy that you need to create six months of thought leadership content that will position you as a go-to voice in your space. So check out the info in the show notes after the episode, all right? Three, two, one. Welcome to the Campfire Circle. I'm your host, Tanya Bhattacharya, and I empower purpose driven women in building influential personal brands that drive change and raise revenue. We all talk about getting a seat at the table, but why though? Who wants to sit in a stuffy boardroom anyway? Let's reimagine the ultimate space of leadership as a Campfire Circle where we share stories that inspire movements, build brave communities to huddle together with for warmth, and where there is always room. Come sit with us. All right, so I did a LinkedIn poll to find out what keeps us from sitting down and batching our thought leadership content. And 61 social impact entrepreneurs, consultants, coaches, advocates, etc., voted. And so I want to break down, you know, what we found out. And I also want to share a couple of thoughts and insights that might help us move beyond these barriers for ourselves. So in fourth place, we had 13% of people say that it's their creative process that keeps them from batching LinkedIn content. And so I totally get this. And I will say and offer that there is no one right way to do anything. And, you know, What I'll share though is for me, my most creative, best ideas for content, they don't come while I'm sitting in front of the computer, right? They come in the shower, upon first waking, walking my dog, in the middle of the night. And as long as you can write them down somewhere, capture them somewhere, whether it's a note on your phone, 
a specific notebook that you keep by your bed, a quick email to yourself. All of these ideas can be batched into content. So I keep a running list of things that I would like to share on LinkedIn and provide insight through in Notion. And so every time I come up with a spicy perspective or hear a story that would be relative to my audience, say during a discovery call or while I'm just having a conversation with somebody, you know, aha moments from client consultations that could actually help other people. But the reason that I don't just like stop and put something together and plop it on LinkedIn is that different ideas can have a bigger impact at different times. And let me ask you this. Would you ask somebody to marry you on your first date with them? You probably wouldn't. Funny story, I actually did do this and that man is now my husband. So maybe I should come up with a different example. But what I'm trying to get at is as you use content to nurture somebody into your audience, into a member of your community, right? It can be helpful to have a sequence to things because building trust in any kind of relationship takes, usually takes time and it takes consistency. So first you share about yourself. You paint a picture of what a vision or a future together could look like. And then as you get more comfortable, you start to share more of the behind the scenes stuff. And so sequencing your content this way or thinking about putting your content in an order like this can be especially helpful for people who have been on LinkedIn for years, but they haven't been posting their own insights, right? So maybe they're liking other people's posts, maybe they're reposting other people's stuff. But the reality is most of us have so many connections from our past careers or lives, and there are oodles of people who you're already connected with who would love to support you and tell their friends about you and potentially hire you. If they just knew what you were doing, and they knew your perspective on your issue, right? So my suggested sequence, especially if you are a little bit newer to posting or if you haven't really had a strategy around posting is to first think about, talk about why you give a hoot, share your why, share your story, your origin story, talk about your perspective on the root cause of your issue. Like why does the problem that you help solve, why does it exist? Why does it continue? Like. Why does it matter? Why does it matter to your audience? So think about that, right? And then secondly, start to share stories that show why they should give a hoot. We know that you give a hoot. Why should they give a hoot? So help to shape the problem that they're facing in their minds through your content, right? Through your stories. And then third, think about sharing content that can really paint a visionary picture of how life can change, right? What does a solution look like? What can life look like immediately after working with you? What would life look like two months after working with you? What could life look like two years after looking with you, right? So what does life look like afterwards? And then finally, my favorite corporate speak term of all time is open the kimono. So open the kimono and share how you work with people, like share testimonials, share pictures of the behind the scenes of you prepping for a client engagement, all that goes into it. Like if you do strategic planning for organizations, like what, how do you prep for that? Take a picture. At this point, ask for the business, encourage people to apply whatever, with whatever systems you have set up, divert people to your honey book form, whatever that looks like. So can you see how sharing content in this kind of sequence can build trust, rapport, and actually nurture people into a relationship. It's the same kind of sense or process or like relationship building process that you would take if you were building a relationship with someone over a series of get togethers one on one. But this way, through your content, you can build trust and community on a much larger scale. And there's other ways that you can share content strategically. If you've ever faced an objection from someone during a discovery call and then put out a story-driven piece of content about that specific objection, like they're going to see it. They're going to see other people commenting on it and resonating with it and be like, huh, okay, I get it. Like I'm reassured. So that's one way of using your content as well in a very specific time-bound way. So, okay, so moving on. So the third place barrier with 18% of votes was that my content might not stay relevant. And so some of the people that I've been talking to about the LinkedIn content sprint next month are like, how can I write content for six months when I don't even necessarily know what my offers are gonna be in six months, right? I don't even know what webinars I'm putting out. I don't even know what blah, blah, blah I'm gonna have. 
And so here's the secret. Nobody actually cares about your offers. And when I say offers, like that could be your group coaching program. That could be your new VIP day. That could be your new service or product. If you are in the nonprofit space, your fundraising campaign could be considered an offer. Like your event you know, could be an offer. New ways to volunteer with you could be an offer. These are all offers and nobody cares about them until you give them a reason to care, right? So what people care about, what they immediately will tune into is your why, it's your passion, it's your expertise, it's the stories that they can see themselves reflected back in. It's stories about the things that make you credible, about that, that make you trustworthy. It's showing up consistently with your perspective and leading with your values and painting that picture of the shared vision of what life can look like after working together. That is what will build trust. And that is what will turn followers into fans, into friends. And so sharing about your offers is like a cherry on top. Like it only comes after the ice cream sundae of visible leadership and providing valuable guidance. And so when your content is written in that way, it can never not be relevant. It will always be relevant. In fact, you can take the six months of content and just repeat the process over again, over and over and over. So let me tell you a story. So I went through all of my content for the last two years that I have had my consultancy. And it took a little bit, but I did this so that I could take the posts that did the best in terms of, for example, I knew they converted a client. I knew I got opportunities from them. I knew that they had great engagement so that I could break them down and share them as examples in the LinkedIn content sprint and like really break down why they worked. And guess what I noticed? Out of more than 100 posts, only two of them were actually specifically about my VIP day, which has really been my main offer for most of that time. So yeah, less than 2% of posts. But I was consistently booked out and made over six figures both years with that offer. And so to be honest, I wasn't sharing about the offer because I didn't want to appear overly salesy, which is a whole different conversation we can talk about at a different time. I'm not telling you that you can't talk about your offers. I think that you should actually talk about them more than I did, but it worked out because it turns out I didn't need to talk about my offer all the time since I was really bought into this long-term approach of showing up as a thought leader or as a trusted guide in the work that I do. And then people would reach out in my DMs or in my inbox and be like, hey, I really like what you stand for. Like, I want more of that for myself. How can I have what you have? Meaning, you know, visibility, courage, self-expression, all that kind of things. And so like when you lead with your values, when you show up in your content with your perspective and your vision, like you can legitimately sell any offer that you want. Because when people have the problem that you're solving for, they know you're their person. People want to buy from people who have an aligned opinion and way of seeing the world. So what if instead of trying to make sure that you're writing timely content about your fundraising training, your DEI consulting, your book coaching, your executive leadership seminar, what if instead of you tried to make sure you're talking about your offer in the best way, you just showed up as an embodied guide? and shared your unique opinions about the stuff that you work on. Like, how could that work out for you? I would encourage you to think about that and potentially try it. Okay, so the next two answers in the poll were actually tied. They were neck and neck at 21 votes each, or about 35% each. And so first, let's talk about writer's block. So what the heck do I say? Yeah, like that's a biggie. That's a big barrier. And it's really hard because we are too close to our own expertise. Like I bet that you could sit with one of your clients, with your business bestie, with a work wife, and just rattle off a bunch of stories and insights on their behalf, right? But it's hard to do that for ourselves because the saying that I love is when you're inside the bottle, it's really hard to read the label on the outside, right? It's backwards, it's blurry. We're just, we're too close to it. We're like inside of it all day long. And sometimes this barrier of writer's block shows up as us feeling maybe if we had another certificate or degree or another year of experience, then we can really show up and say something. You have so much know-how already. It's just about creating the time, the space, and the momentum to get your existing wisdom out so that it can reach more people. 
So I've been thinking a lot about how we can forget how much we know because we work inside of our expertise all the time. So this happens to me often. Like I'll be working with a client and I'll find myself saying, oh, but obviously this goes without saying. And people are like, what? I've never heard that term before, before you said it, right? And so someone at the beginning of the transformation is seeking out the practice knowledge that you take for granted. Again, because you are working in it all day long. You can support people who are at just at the beginning of this process of change through your content and create the conditions where it feels safe for them to learn more, donate, support, buy, like whatever the next call to action is. And so I have found often that thought leadership content leads to quicker relationship building. It leads to more aligned referrals and invitations and just better fit clients, right? And so I know writer's block is normal. I know it's part of the creative process. And there are so many ways that you can mine for story ideas, notes from your discovery calls, answers that your clients gave you from old applications about the barriers that they're facing, Literally stories from your childhood that demonstrate your transferable skills, like talk to people who knew you when you were a kid and ask them about a funny story that they remember about you that, and I bet you could tie it in somehow to the work that you do now. There's so many ways that we could mine for story ideas. And we are going to dive into that even deeper during our content sprint. So you never have to stare at that taunting blinking cursor again. And what if, uh, last thing on this point. What if instead of feeling like content creation is a chore or writer's block is just like a thing, like a hurdle that we have to jump over? What if instead we could let writing be a way for us to self-actualize and get creative, right? And to explore old stories that we have and rewrite them for ourselves and our audience and to show up and get into the practice of actually saying what we believe and showing up with our opinion and our perspective and creating a community of people who believe the same thing. It's so magical to have this happen. You know, and there's, I love this concept of how you do one thing is how you do everything. So as you batch your content, it's not just about content, right? It's a portal into gaining your voice, into building power, growing your influence, you're upping your personal change-making capacity and really building that habit and gaining a practice of turning your thoughts into tangible leadership, right? Into showing up and guiding people towards behavior change. Okay, so last one. The last one is, and again, this was tied for the most votes. And it's hard to find dedicated time. I assumed this would be the most popular one and 21 people agreed that it's hard to find dedicated time. So we are all super busy. That goes without saying. But we always make time for the things that we find as important and that move the needle in our business. And batching content, yes, it's hard to find the time, but it actually frees up our time so that we can rest, go on vacation, do client work with excellence without worrying about getting like checking off our posts for the week or whatever. You know what I mean? And I found it's not really about the time. It's oftentimes about our old friend perfectionism and procrastination, which I think go hand in hand. Like you can't really talk about one without the other. They're evil cousin. You know what I mean? Because we want to get our content and the ways that we show up perfect. And so we either keep putting it off or maybe we'll spend like literally an hour on a post and then trashing it because we feel like it's not perfect. We feel like it doesn't meet our standards. But perfection is actually not required to show up as a go-to trusted voice on LinkedIn. And actually, it's not only unrealistic, it's unhelpful. Like people are not looking for perfection. It's our most human, authentic, and vulnerable stories that attract the audience that we're looking for. So I really hope that this does a little something to help you grant yourself permission to show up on LinkedIn as you are and just start to watch the magic unfold. And what has really helped me create the dedicated time is to do this work in a community of others who are also committed to holding each other accountable and sharing each other on. So if anything about this episode has inspired you to take the leap and get visible on LinkedIn, join the LinkedIn content sprint by March 30th. We are creating a space for impact-driven business owners to get six months worth of thoughts, opinions, expertise out of their brain and into the world in only two hours per week so you can build top of mind trust and community. So I'm teaching the same nurture sequence and prompts that I have used myself to create a six-figure consulting business. 
and that I use with my one-on-one ghostwriting clients for literally a tiny fraction of the cost. Plus, you will get my feedback on everything you create. And sometimes that will look like copy coaching and feedback to really maximize your posts. And other times, honestly, all you really need is a little pep talk. I want you to start thinking of your LinkedIn as a lighthouse, right? Content is like the fuel that keeps the light on so that the ships or rather the people can actually find you and more safely into the solution that you provide. So you're invited. Check out the link in my show notes to learn more and register. And remember, we're closing the cart on March 30th. So go ahead and visit the link and reach out if you have any questions. What'd you think? Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or even better, reach out and let me know through lumosmarketing.co. Yes, that's lumos as in the illumination spell from Harry Potter. Because when you shine, magical things happen. You can get social with me on LinkedIn. And of course, check out the show notes to stay in touch with our guests. Let's talk soon.